Now, we have this mess of a particle system. I'm going to turn off the sprite renderer because I actually quite like uh, the mesh renderer that we have here. But it just kind of spawns in the particles and then um, nothing else really happens. Like, they move in one direction until they die, which is nice, but quite limited. So today I want to talk about the difference between applying a velocity and applying a force. And... Really easily, the difference can be summed up between uh, the spawn particle and the update particle. Because we're adding velocity on spawn, but that just adds it once. So when the particle spawns, it'll immediately have a velocity, so it won't start uh, as a stationary thing. If we turn this off, everything just starts as a stationary uh, particle, and that, well, has its own unique look, but maybe not great. <laughs> But in particle update, we have things like a drag, which slows down the velocity of your particles. So you can see they will now start with a velocity, but slowly move down in uh, their speed. So now that we have drag, we probably want to give them a little bit more velocity when they start off. So let's give them a, so let's give them a velocity of like 150. And you can see that they start out and then they almost like stop moving in midair because... Particle update is now applying a stopping force, a opposing force to whatever direction they're moving in, every single update side. But that can also, of course, go the other way around. And that is where forces come in. We can add in a bunch of different forces. So instead of adding a velocity at the start, so let's just get rid of this altogether just to make a point, and get rid of drag for now as well just to show it a little bit better, we can add a uh, force. And there is a bunch of forces that we can add, acceleration force, a gravity force, uh, a linear force, a point force, uh, there's a bunch of forces. Again, we're not going to go over all of the different forces. This is not Star Wars. I'm just going to show you a couple of the most common ones. So, of course, we have the gravity force. If we add that, things will start falling, because there's now gravity. Uh, it, it's literally as simple as that. There's not much more to it. <laughs> Another one that will be commonly used is the point force. And this will apply a, a force, anything that is close to it, in a direction away from it. So usually that will be something like the point force will just be at the center, and everything uh, that spawns will now be moving away from the center. But you can do some more interesting stuff with this. You could, for instance, say, instead of just setting our point force to uh, the simulation position, you can do some more interesting stuff and uh, set it a little bit above it so that everything is getting pushed down from that single point. Uh, that requires a little bit more complex setup though, so we'll probably come back to that ID a little bit later uh, because it requires us to get rid of the simulation position uh, and then add it to something else, and that's a little bit annoying. But we have this point force, so everything is getting pushed away from the center, but we also have the exact opposite. So we have a uh, attraction force. Instead of normal forces, which push, these ones pull. So we also have a point and a line attraction force. Let's do a point attraction force, and this does the exact opposite, right? So it pulls everything in to the center. And here's where we get into some really, really fun shit. Because we can set the attraction radius uh, to be a little bit bigger. Uh, just to make sure. And then if we set this attraction strength to something uh, much bigger like 150, for instance, or maybe even like 1500, and then we enable our point force again, the particles are now both being pushed and pulled into this position, which makes this little back and forth looking uh, system. So let's actually set the spawn rate to like two particles instead, uh, so we can see the movement a little bit better. It makes us like almost bobbing back and forth kind of movement, which is quite nice. And all this is happening in particle updates. So every single frame, it's solving for all of these different forces that we're applying. So this is happening on its own cycle. Particle spawn, we set velocity directly. And we can do a lot of stuff, right? Because we can, um, we can apply forces in here as well. Uh, we have certain uh, forces like the cruel noise force, which is a like soft random force that we can use. We can apply like one instance of that force on spawn and then not apply it on update again. We can do that. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can. Speaking of the cruel noise force though, uh, let's 
also show off what that does because that is probably a force that you've seen a lot of people make like very impressive looking particle systems with because it looks very pretty very easily i'm going to get rid of the uh gravity force as well and let's add in our curl noise force this is frankly just kind of a cheat code to make things look good if i'm being honest with you so if we increase the strength here a little bit and we decrease the frequency ever so slightly and i spawn in a boatload more particles so let's spawn like 1500 you can see these are all moving in their own uh, random direction and this doesn't really do all that much yet but let's change a couple of other things let's initialize particle at a much longer lifetime so that we can actually see these things moving around and you will start seeing at some point that this forms a certain uh, almost wave-like pattern. If we increase the strength a little bit more even to like 200 and we increase a little bit of drag. So the drag will also uh, kind of keep these particles in groupings. So if you play around a little bit with some values there, so I increased the uh, noise strength to quite a, a large number and then decrease the frequency to like quite a low number here. This really shows off what it does very well with uh, the particles facing in the direction that they have velocity. Because you can see them kind of wiggling around because they're following a noise path. And that creates uh, this quite pleasant looking uh, movement that feels kind of like wind movement. Which is not to say that this is how you simulate wind movement because there is a thing to apply a wind force as well. But you will notice if I now increase the drag a good bit that some of that like randomness and some of that chaos starts to slowly disappear and very slowly if you keep playing with this patterns will start to emerge so we have a very high noise strength now and a very uh, low noise frequency as well as a decently high drag and that will start creating these like very very nice patterns I think at this point, uh, what we want to do is we also want to set the lifetime back to uh, something more reasonable, like uh, five seconds, for instance. And this is the kind of pattern that you've probably seen a million times in a million different renders, uh, because it, again, is an easy way to make things look complex and organic. It's quite nice. Specifically, then, if we change this uh, mesh renderer from cubes, for instance, to something like a sphere, suddenly... This feels like a like a very dangerous like smoke cloud thing. Of course, we probably could do with doing this with like a uh, sprite renderer instead to make it a little bit less intensive. <laughs> uh, but this is how you can quite easily create like one of those types of effects. Again, I'm sure that if you're interested in visual effects and like particle uh, simulation, you've probably seen a simulation that is very similar to this, probably a, a little bit more fine-tuned than what I have just made, because these are quite nice. That is how uh, forces work. So if, if we add in like a little bit of maybe gravity again, let's see what that does with this, because it's going to absolutely screw with it, I assume. Not even that bad. So this is actually interesting, right? Because our curl noise force is so incredibly strong and it's getting uh, dragged down by this drag. And we can probably, like, if we halve this drag to, like, 25, uh, this will start becoming a little bit more chaotic once again. Uh, but then if we also halve this to roughly, like, 15,000, it should be more or less the same movement, but it will now be more susceptible to other kinds of influences as well so it's more a ratio between these two things than anything else so again let's lower this to about 5000 and then the drag should go to about eight and now we can start seeing that the gravity is taking a little bit more effect on this system but it still has uh, that really really nice shape and the lower the noise frequency uh the bigger the individual like strands of this pattern are going to be as well and the higher you probably want the actual like uh, particle lifetime to be so probably set this to 10 if we set the frequency to something lower again again that is kind of like a ratio that you want to be looking into but that's the basic idea so we talked about 
velocity and about forces now so with this you can really start getting working on some interesting stuff but you can also see that we're like doing like quite number on our fps here when a lot of these meshes start spawning in and that's because we're rendering this entirely on the cpu i think next time it's time to talk about some more theory stuff again and we're going to talk about cpu and gpu uh rendering because they both have their upsides and they both have their downsides there's no singular you should just do this button and for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my cave digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 